Hello, this is Jared from Commit to Quality, and in today's video, we're going to go over reading from a CSV file and writing to a new CSV file. For the setup, then, all I've done is I have this test, which is obviously completely blank at the moment. I've just scoped out the uh, name of the test, and I've created a CSV file which has three rows one which is the header, and then I've just got some data which is the YouTube channel and the question of have you subbed yet? If you have subbed, Great, if you haven't, please click that button because it helps a lot. To read and write from a CSV file, we have a load of different packages we can install and import. The one I'm going to be using today is called Fast CSV. And the documentation's here, so I'll put a link in the description as well. And it gives you a bunch of information on how to install, how to get started with it, how you can pass data, how you can write back to a file. Really, really useful, so definitely have a look at this because we are just kind of scratching the surface of what we're doing here. So to start off, I'm going to say npm install fast CS csv and hit enter. Because we're going to be executing Node.js code where under the hood the CSV is going to use the file system, we're going to want to uh, create all of our reading and writing code inside the Cypress config and we're going to want to create a task office. So that's what we're going to do now. So if we open up the Cypress config, inside the setup node events, on task, we'll start creating some new tasks. So let's comment here, create task to read from CSV. And to do this, we can just say, uh, we'll do read from CSV. And here we're going to want to actually do the logic of our code, which is just going to essentially be uh, reading from the CSV file that we pass through. Because of the way we work with passing the files, we want to actually return a promise. So we can say return new promise. And we'll name this, say, resolve. And we can do what we want inside here then. So what I want to do is when I'm passing from the CSV, I want to spit it out into a new array so then we can access it in the actual Cypress test of whatever we want to do. So I'm just going to say let, um, and what should we call it? We'll just call it data array. And eventually that's what's going to be populated with our CSV information. Under here is where we go in to actually use the fast CSV package to pass the data. Well, before we do anything, let's go to the top. We can get rid of that. And we want to bring in the passing. So I'm going to say const, uh, what should we call it? We'll just call it CSV equals require. And we're going to bring in the fast CSV module. which is going to use the parsing methods. Okay, so we've got that saved. Now what we can do is we can actually use this. I'm gonna say CSV dot, and what we can see in here, we've got a bunch of different things. So we wanna pass file because we pass it from the CSV. And the first parameter we pass in through is location. So let's pass the location where it lives. So it'll be so on the root level, so I'll say my CSV dot CSV. And we can pass some options through as well. So what I'm going to say here is the, one of the options I know it has is headers. So essentially what that's going to say, if headers is set to true, this will make every row an object. If it's set to false, then every row is going to be treated like data and it'll be stored as an array. So now we should only have commit quality and yes and random channel no. And we'll miss out the first row, which is the headers, because we say headers true. So now with this, we want to add a listener on here to say, actually do something with the data, which is just going to push it. And then we can add another one to say, once the promise is ended, we're then going to resolve to data array, which is our array. So to do that, we can just say on data. And we'll just use data to pass through. Create our callback. And we can say here, data array dot push data. So each, line, each row is going to be pushed through into that array. Now, to return this, then, we're going to say on end. Create the callbacks. We don't need a parameter in there. 
And all I'm going to say is resolve data array. And that should be enough to get us to pass the data. And when we pass it through to the test, it should be enough for us to say, right, I've read the CSV, I've pushed the data into this array, and then we can access this array, which we are actually going to be returning up here with this promise. So let's save that and go back to the example side.js. So with that task created now, all we have to do is say side.task and the name of the task, I forgot what it was, so let's go back. The name of the task was read from CSV. So we'll pass that through. And then we can work with the results. So we can say, then I would say res for result. And do something with it. So in this case, I'm just gonna output the data just to see what, what we have coming out. So I can say console.log res. So let's open up Cypress and see if we're reading from the CSV. So I'll say npx, oh, npx, Cypress, open. Hit enter and we wait for this to load. Okay, so let's go to example.cy.js, which is the file we're using. And what we should see now is in the console log, our CSV has been passed as expected. Here we go, we've got channel, commit quality, sub yes, and random channel no. Let's just go back to the actual code a second. And if I am now to change headers to false, let's go back to Cypress. We'll clear this as well. Okay, so here we go, we've got the array, which we can see has three elements. We look into it now, and the headers we've got here of channel and sub are being passed through. So uh, I'll keep it like that for now, just so we've got them out. So then you can access the array like you normally would, and you can grab whatever values you want from this for any of your testing. For example, I could say, let's just go back in here, and I could say uh, console.log res, let's get the second element which is going to be commit quality and we could say first column save that it rerun the test and we should see a log out here that says commit quality there we are we've got the array being spat out because we still have that console.log and then we have commit quality as well great i also want to show you how we can retrieve data when headers is set to true as well so let's just bin off this this console.log now because that's not going to work we're going to go back to the config and set headers to true which will now pass it into an actual object which makes it a lot easier when you're working with it so now what i can do is i can either say console.log um res and we'll say let's take the first row which of course is going to be data now because it's passed into headers and i can say dot channel which would be commit quality because this is the first row um this is the first row of data and it's titled as channel because it's created this object saying channel is these and sub is yes or no what i can also do which Let's add a comment here. Or you can say, let's do the console.log again. Res zero. Oh, not nine, zero. And then I can say instead of saying dot channel, I can do the square brackets and say whatever the key is. So in this case it was channel. If I save that, what we'll see is it'll print out the same thing. So let's go back to Cypress. And here we go. We've got commit quality printed out twice. And we can see the object now is two two elements in the array and you've got the object channel and sub so i could go back change either of these so if let's just change that to sub and save let's go back into cypress and you've got yes which is returned just to mention uh it's worth using this second one when you've got spaces so if you have a space in your header you want to use the second instead of the dot Let's just, that, that's just a quick example of how you can grab things. Let's clear these console.logs. Let's put headers back to false. 
And next then, we want to write to a CSV file. And we'll be using the existing data from the CSV we've just read from. And what we'll do is create a new CSV file generated within our solution. And I'll show how you can kind of add some records to it as well. So just to save time, let's copy this on task. And let's paste this down, we'll just say right. And here then we're going to say uh, right to CSV. Let's rename the comment. And this one, I'm actually going to do a little bit different. So we've kind of hard coded the CSV file here, but let's show an example of how we can use our properties to say, um, choose what CSV file name it, the, the file of the CSV is going to be, and we'll choose what we want to pass through. So what rows we want to actually create in this new CSV file. So let's just get rid of this. And first of all, let's pass through what we just said. Let's say name and row. So name is going to be name of the file and rows are what we're actually going to be creating inside the CSV file. Now, just like we used the um, pass module up here, we now want to use the, I believe it's right to path. So I'm going to say const. I will say right to path, which I've got this from the documentation. So just to show you what I did on this, just in case you're looking for how I found these. I went to the format in section because obviously we're not passing anymore. I went to methods and it gives us a bunch of the methods we can use. So you go right, right to stream, right to path here. So this is what I took. So I could actually just copy this even gives you a nice little example here of how you can do it um, hard code in the rows and passing it through. Let's go back to Cypress. We don't need that because I can just paste it in here. Oh, I've copied the TypeScript declaration. I'm using JavaScript. So I'll go back here, select JavaScript and copy this one. So inside here, it's a lot simpler. There's a lot less code to do. What I'm going to say is use that right to path. So right to path. And it's going to ask us, if we wait for this to IntelliSense, it's going to ask us for the path. So we can say, uh, we're going to want to interpolate the name into this one, of course. So we can say it's the same. We're going to put it at the same location. So it's going to live next to this MyCSV. Um, I'm going to say interpolate the name. And of course, we'll add .csv. Of course, you could put .csv as your extension into your variable, but I'm just going to put it here for now. And then the second is the rows. So you can see it's an array of rows. So we're just going to pass through rows and this will be handled from directly inside our test. Because it's a task as well, let's just return now on this and we should be good to go. Awesome. So let's save that and we'll jump into our test file and we'll now try to write some data into a CSV. I'm, I've said for my example, I want to actually use the data inside this my CSV file and I can append some stuff just to show you how it works as an example. Now what I can say is once again, sci.task. And inside here, we're going to take the name of the task. So what did we name it? Right to CSV. Makes sense. Let's copy that and paste it in here. And of course, go remember, we've got them properties now as well that we want to pass through. So let's do that. We'll say, uh, what was it? it was name and we'll just name it something temp. That's good enough for us right now. And rows. We can say just pass res through and it's going to do exactly what we need. 
So let's just save that for now and let's see it run in and see if it creates our CSV file for us. Okay, so we can see that that's created there. So if we actually go back into our solution then, what we should see is temp.csv. Let's go into it and there we are. We've got the headers passed through and we've got the actual data as well from the my CSV. So it matches exactly. But you might want to do some more. You might want to kind of alter the data. You might want to add a new header. And it's really simple to do this as well. And because it's all pushed into an array, easy enough to handle. So let's go to example.side.js. And before we write to it, let's say, um, let's add a new column in here. So we'll say res dot and shift, which is going to add to the top of the array. Um, and let's say channel. And we'll take channel. We'll say uh, subbed. And then we'll also add a new column, which will be, we'll just name it liked. Of course, because these are going to be the headers now, what I want to do in my cypress.config file is actually when I'm doing the reading, I'm going to set this back to true because I'm going to set new headers when I write this file. So what we should see now is we've got new headers added so a new row right at the top of the array which is going to be channel subbed and liked and then what i can do is i can push data into this array as well so i can add new data now so i'll say push and tell you what we'll copy this and now i'll say i don't know let's just say new channel Subbed yes, like will be, oh, that was weird. It, my machine's going too slow. So new channel, we'll say yes, and we'll say, have you liked? Yes. Let's save this and see what happens. Okay, so that's completed. Let's go back now to our solution. So open up the temp CSV and what you can see now is channel subbed and liked, which is what we put to the top of the array. These two are still the same with uh, no liked answer. And then we've got this new one, which is channel, yes for subbed and yes for liked. So that's how you can kind of update things and add to the CSV and create a new CSV based off whatever you want to do. Like I said, the same thing, the same principle applies to the documentation for this. You can go into formatting, you can look at the methods, they'll show you some cool examples you can do with this as well. So there's a lot going on that you can have a look into. This is just the basics of how to basically read from a CSV and also write to a new CSV. And just before we finish up, go back to the config where we're dealing with these um, event handlers where like on the on when we call in this when the connection closes. You can also do things like add on error so you can handle errors. We're not doing any of that in the um, write into CSV. But you could definitely add those on for more kind of defensive strategies. And um, there's examples of this in the documentation as well. So definitely go have a look at that. As always, any comments or questions, please drop them down below. A like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Have a good day.